It's unfortunate, but wrestling fans have grown accustomed to suddenly hearing news of wrestlers passing away. Often these wrestlers are tragically taken away from us at a young age, and unfortunately, 2018 has been no different. As this year we've said goodbye to some of the biggest legends in wrestling history and some of the most charismatic wrestlers to ever grace the squared circle. Some were massive legends, some only got their 15 minutes of fame, and others weren't even household names. But this video is to simply pay tribute to them all. Number 1. Masa Sato Fans who are only used to watching present day wrestling might not be familiar with Mr. Sato, a former AWA World Champion and World Tag Team Champion during the 80s in WWE where he partnered with the devious Mr. Fuji. Masanori Sato was one of the most well respected wrestlers in the business as he conveyed toughness in and outside the ring. Apart from being involved in the infamous arrest where he and Kempatera caused a disturbance at a McDonald's, he was famously involved in a feud with Antonio Inoki where the two competed in an island death match on Ganujima Island and wrestled a match that lasted two hours. Sato retired from professional wrestling in 1999 and was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in 2000. He was to be the torchbearer at the upcoming Tokyo 2020 Summer Olympics but sadly died on July 14th at the age of 76 due to complications from the disease. Number 2. Matt Capitelli WWE's Tough Enough series would give two wrestlers the opportunity to sign with WWE and become a wrestling superstar on a global platform. Some alumni would include Daniel Puder, Nidia, Maven and co-winners of Season 3, Johnny Nitro and Matt Capitelli. While some of these wrestlers managed to find success after their win, Matt unfortunately didn't as he would only wrestle a handful of matches, the biggest being involved in the APA's Invitational Barroom Brawl in 2003 at the Vengeance pay-per-view. Not being pushed enough, Capitelli would be sent to WWE's developmental territory OVW to hone his wrestling skills. He would win the promotion's heavyweight championship but shortly after winning, he would learn of being diagnosed with cancer. After fighting the illness for more than 12 years, Capitelli would sadly pass away this year at the young age of only 38. Tributes of him would be paid by many of his closest friends in WWE as well as Stephanie McMahon. Number 3. Brickhouse Brown After wrestling for 5 years professionally, Brown would break into the business in 1987 wrestling in Championship Wrestling Association and went on to winning the AWA Southern Heavyweight Championship defeating King of Memphis's own Jerry Lawler, headlining the Mid-South Coliseum. He would go on to wrestling in a number of different promotions, including the WWE as enhancement talent. News broke in 2017 that Brown only had six months to a year to live after being diagnosed with cancer. Brown managed to battle the illness for 14 months until the cancer got the better of him, passing away on July 29th this year. Number 4. Nikolai Volkov at one point in time, Nikolai Volkov was one of the most hated figures in professional wrestling. Playing the gimmick of a Russian communist, just his presence alone would antagonize the American crowd as his main run was during the height of the Cold War. Waving a Soviet flag down to the ring, he would send crowds into a frenzy when he demanded the Russian national anthem to be played and with great patriotism, sing along to it. Volkov would achieve huge success in the 80s in WWE feuding with wrestling's real American Hulk Hogan and teaming up with the Iron Sheik to win its Tag Team Championship. Volkov later teamed with Boris Zukov as the Bolsheviks until it was revealed Volkov's character was Lithuanian and he thereafter became a babyface. Later on however, Volkov's character fell on hard times in a storyline that saw the million dollar man Ted DiBiase bring him in as a lackey for the million dollar corporation. Volkov's efforts were well recognized and he was inducted into the 2005 WWE Hall of Fame and made sporadic appearances on WWE television. Even at the ripe age of 70, Volkov would amazingly still wrestle at indie shows up until his death in July this year. Number 5. Bruno Sammartino Sammartino became an overnight sensation when he defeated Buddy Rogers in Madison Square Garden in just 48 seconds to become WWE's second ever world champion. Incredibly, Bruno would hold a championship for almost 8 years, a record that hasn't been touched to this day. In fact, 
When he was beaten by Ivan Koloff for the championship in 1971, fans were so shocked by the defeat, grown men were even seen weeping in the audience. However, as time grew on, his relationship with WWE deteriorated. Firstly, after the treatment his son David received in the promotion, and he was disgusted by the revelation of steroids being used under McMahon's nose during the 80s and 90s, and deemed the WWE to be too vulgar during the Attitude Era. After many years of not stepping foot in WWE, San Martino buried the hatchet with Vince, and was inducted into its 2013 Hall of Fame class, and inducted fellow friend and former foe in the ring Larry Sabisco in the 2015 WWE Hall of Fame. Bruno would pass away at the age of 82. A 10-bell salute was made at both a WWE house show in Cape Town and again on Monday Night Raw. Number 6. Paul Jones Just hours after the sad announcement that Bruno Sammartino had just passed away, one of the most despised heels in the NWA would also go. After winning the NWA Tag Team Championship six times in the 70s, number one Paul Jones would transition into a manager and form the Paul Jones Army in 1982, a formidable stable that included WWE Hall of Famer Rick Rude, superstar Billy Graham, Manny Fernandez, and the Powers of Pain. Jones would however leave wrestling entirely in 1991 and own a body shop up until his death this year. Number seven, Big Bully Busick. Nick Busick would probably be best remembered in WWE for being its short-lived bully, as he would mock WWE fans at ringside and bully his opponents in the ring. The height of his WWE career saw him enter a feud with the Brooklyn Brawler to determine who was WWE's real bully and have matches with top superstars such as Bret the Hitman Hart and the British Bulldog. He would wrestle until 2013, even when being diagnosed with chronic atrial fibrillation. Busick would undergo surgery to correct it, but in 2015, he would be diagnosed with esophageal cancer and would go through chemotherapy. Busick was cancer-free a year later, but in 2017, he was diagnosed with a brain tumour. Busick would pass away in May at the age of 63. Number 8. Jim the Anvil Neidhart Nicknamed the Anvil after legitimately winning an anvil throwing contest, Neidhart quickly proved to be the powerhouse in his tag team with real-life brother-in-law Bret Hart, where he found fame and success as one half of the Hart Foundation, capturing the gold on two occasions. Unfortunately, once his pairing with Bret ended, Neidhart found himself paired with other wrestlers in different tag teams and a singles career which left him grounded. He would later return to WWE and join the Hart Foundation faction, feuding with the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Patriot before entering semi-retirement wrestling sporadically in WWE, TNA, and independent promotions before ultimately retiring in 2013. Neidhart would appear on WWE's reality show Total Divas, an insight into the family life of daughter Natalia and son-in-law TJ Tyson Kidd, and appeared at various wrestling conventions. But on the morning of August 13th, after complaining of not sleeping well the night before, Neidhart would decide to change the thermostat, but experienced a seizure and fell on the floor hitting his head and passing away from traumatic brain injury. Close friends of Neidhart posted tributes on Twitter, as well as WWE posting a tribute on Raw. A devastated Natalia also donned the signature pink and black jacket at this year's SummerSlam, a tribute to her father who wore the same jacket 18 years ago at the same pay-per-view. Number 9. Brian Christopher It was one of wrestling's most shocking deaths as many had no idea how Brian Lawler's life had spiralled out of control so quickly. Lawler entered the WWE in the mid-90s under the pseudonym Brian Christopher, so that many wrestling fans wouldn't immediately link his wrestling career to his famous father, Jerry Lawler, as he wanted to become a success on his own. He would later partner with Scott Taylor to form Too Much, which would later be known as Too Cool. The group would be the cornerstone of the Attitude Era, where they would be massively over by bringing high energy to the ring and performing a post-match dance with ally Rikishi. However, when Lawler was released for drug possession in 2001, his career never bounced back. He would be in trouble with the law on a number of occasions. In an attempt to clean up, Lawler would reappear in WWE as part of the ongoing feud between Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler. Just as things were looking better for Lawler, he was arrested again this year for driving under the influence. Suffering from depression, Lawler was found hanging in a cell at Hardman County Jail and pronounced brain dead at the scene. 
His father made the hard decision to turn off his life support on July 13th. He was only 46. Number 10. Johnny Valiant While Lush's Johnny V may be more familiar with older wrestling fans, there was no denying his success in the sport. The Boogie Woogie Man was a two-time WWF Tag Team Champion with kayfabe brother handsome Jimmy Valiant and worked along huge wrestling stars such as Hulk Hogan and Brutus Beefcake as their manager. Johnny V would dabble in acting, appearing in the hit show The Sopranos and various other small movie roles. On April 4th, Johnny V was involved in an accident that ended his life. He was 71. And number 11, Vader. Vader began his wrestling career all the way back in Vern Gagne's AWA after being forced to retire from a professional football career due to suffering a ruptured patella. Whilst his pro football career was over, the big man had a great opportunity in wrestling and would garner huge success in Japan, becoming the first Gaijin wrestler to hold the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. He would return to wrestle in the United States and find tremendous success in WCW, becoming a three-time World Heavyweight Champion. Though Vader would eventually become one of Hogan's jobbers towards the end of his WCW run, there was big promise for him in the WWE. Vader started off with one of the best debuts, demonstrating his raw power in the ring and main event pay-per-views with some of the WWE's biggest stars at the time. Appearing in other promotions such as TNA and AGPW, Vader would continue to wrestle and make sporadic appearances in WWE as a legend. He was forced to slow down, however, after being diagnosed with congestive heart failure and unfortunately announced to his fans he only had a few years on the clock, but his love for the sport wouldn't diminish as he kept on wrestling despite his prognosis. In May this year, he underwent heart surgery, but he would pass away the following month. His son announced the news on Twitter. <laughs>